Hey everybody, welcome back for another I Would Camp That Adventure. Rita and I are in the lovely isolated mountain town of Grand Cache, Alberta. It's pretty busy here, being that at the time of recording this, it is the long weekend for Canada Day, which is a few days before Independence Day for our American friends and viewers. So uh, happy almost Canada Day, happy almost Independence Day. Uh, just got the truck fueled up. We're gonna be getting out and doing some bombing around. I just wanna stop and grab a coffee before we get out, cause that's just starting the day right. You ready to get out and do some adventuring, babe? Yeah, but before we leave town, we're gonna have to go to a grocery store because I forgot one thing that we probably don't wanna have lunch without. I forgot to bring an onion. Okay, well, do you mind if we just grab a coffee super quick? Sure, where do you wanna grab one? Oh, uh, I see there's an A&W just down the road there. So we could just zip through the drive through and then go get an onion. Alrighty, let's go. Hey, you think if we ask nicely, they'll give me like a little cup of their diced onion that they would put onto their burgers? <laughs> like just like a whole cup? Just ask them for like a whole onion or like half an onion? Well, why not? McDonald's will sometimes give you extra pickles on the side. No, you know, you know, you know what you need to do. You need to be like, uh, I want like a double teen burger with like triple the onions, but I don't want like any pickles, tomatoes, meat, cheese, or even a bun. Just you know, just the onions. Just a burger bag full of onions. <laughs> double teen, but hold everything but the onions and make it triple onions. <laughs> that might be enough <laughs> onions for the trip, but I don't think they'll go for that. <laughs> I mean, you can ask if you want. The worst they could say is no. Just like raw onions? Yeah, just raw onions. Give me one second. Okay, how about this? I'll just charge you with like a sauce or something and I'll do like 10 of those. Sure, sounds good to me. Okay, well, I guess we don't have to go to the grocery store. The guy's gonna just sell us some onions. Hey, how's it going? Hey, buddy. Yeah, it's a, that's a lot. <laughs> Oh, like you did like a full cup. Oh, there. that'll do. <laughs> You're the man. Yeah, that's the one thing we forgot, so. That's all right. Here you go. Got onions now. All right. Give me one second. Here's the onions. Awesome. We'll tell tales of you around a campfire in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> there you go. Thanks, you buddy. Have a great day. You too, buddy. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of onions. <laughs> Got an entire cup full. Just a quick stop into the secondary kitchen box to grab some Ziploc bags. One, so we can transfer <laughs> all those onions in there. And two, so we can have some extras in the fridge just in case we gotta pack anything up. Okay, I just grabbed a few. There's one. And I'll just put the rest of these in the fridge, okay? Okay. Uh, they're a, a little more thinly sliced than I would do at home, so I'll just need to make sure that oh. they uh, don't burn when we make lunch or dinner with them. Oh. That's incredible. Do we need it? Oh, oh, we were able to fit it all into one bag? Yep. Hold on. I love onions. Oh, no, 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 oh. no, no. Oh, you wanted a piece. I want onions with a side of onions. I love onions. Mm -hmm. We're not worried about bad breath over here. Okay, I'm just gonna pop this into the fridge. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm gonna double bag it. Can okay. you give me one more bag? Um, I, yeah, I put the rest of them in here. No, it's a good idea having some Ziploc bags in the fridge. Mm -hmm. Cause yep. I have so many of them in the secondary kitchen box. Yeah, it's another thing I forgot until you pointed out that you had some in the truck already, but we'll just double bag uh. these to try to keep the smell from getting onto our fruit at least. Yeah. I remember going on a camping trip once where you you packed me onions. I think I was out by myself in BC. Despite my best efforts, that whole fridge reeked of onions. Uh, 
you win some, you lose some. Sounds like a bomb went off in there. All right, so that is our morning excitement of getting some fuel, both for the vehicle and for ourselves, and finding a civilized washroom, and Dustin finding his civilized Java. Oh, I love you. Yeah, he says that to the Java more than he says that to me. And we got our surprise onions, so let us head out and see what we can find for exploring outside of Grand Cash. Woo! Woo, woo, woo! Well, here's where we will be starting our little back road explore. Lots of clouds in the sky. Looking like we could see some rain in the, in the not so distant future, but I guess we'll see how she goes. But otherwise right now it's really hot and really peaceful and yeah, just happy to be out here again. I had a lot of fun exploring down here last year, but uh... Like I said in our last video, the wildfire situation, I just wasn't able to make it back out here. So really happy to be back out here. Uh, hopefully see some things I got to see last year, maybe find some, some different things. Uh, these are active haul roads, so things can change within a year. And it's really awesome that I get to bring Rita along this time. Here's the T intersection. Now, if we were to go right, we would head back and eventually hit the road that we came from. The windshield side windows all mucky from all the puddles we went through. So we're gonna be heading over this way, Active Hall Road, and there's a whole bunch of cool stuff off the side roads to see. I'm sure we won't have any problem finding a place to camp tonight. Dora the Explorer, what does the map say? Ah, uh, yeah, I think we're supposed to go left. There's a spot I'm really excited to show you. Definitely a potential camping spot tonight. Also with it being the weekend, like it is a an active work site, but being that it's the weekend, hopefully there won't be anybody around. This ground is pretty soupy. Rita. No, Rita, there is only the goblin. Rita, when I said I had a place in mind for us to potentially camp, this is not what I was talking about. It seems quite roomy enough to me. You could call it another hole in the wall. Would this still qualify as a hole in the wall? 
It's a pipe. It fits. So you're just going to stay here then? Yeah, look, I got a free water slide right into the swamp. Cool. Well, God bless. All the best to you in your uh, future endeavors. I shall return to my brethren in the swamp. Well, I guess Rita found the pipe house of her dreams, so we're just going to continue on. It'll be just us from now on. R.I.P. Rita. We'll remember you fondly. Well, figures we get out here and it's starting to rain. So I came out here a year ago, nice wide open area, active work site, but uh, and I don't see any cameras or anything. They must have a booster or there must be like a tower nearby because it's actually really good cell service out here for being out in the middle of nowhere. But what I really like about this spot is just beyond all the uh, dirt and gravel here, just, beautiful view of like the rolling hills mountains in the background just a gorgeous area here probably going to be doing sandwiches just keep it really simple so bring out this one board here second one in case Rita wants two doesn't matter how many years I truck camp, it always is still the coolest thing, blows my mind, just having all this stuff on the go, ready to go wherever you are. I still think that's cool that guy gave us all those onions. I mean, we had to pay for them, but still. What a bro. Got some, oh, I think these are some hamburger buns we have from home that we wanted to use before they go bad. And I think there was some bell peppers. I usually try to pack the meat on the bottom, so I'm probably gonna be a little bit of, doing a little bit of digging here. Oh. Hamana, hamana. Ooh, look at all that. Ooh. Don't mind me, just having a moment here. One of those classic moments where I'm gonna have to pull everything out of the fridge just to find that one thing. Yep. Well, at least you found the lettuce. Oh, there's the cheese. Vardy herb and spice. Yep. All right, well, I didn't have to tear, I, I tore most of the fridge apart, but not the entire thing. I just realized I think I forgot mustard. Oh. Oh. The... Well, we're nowhere near an A&W, so. No. <laughs> well, let's leave that lettuce out and the sliced onions and the bread, meat, and cheese. That's all we really need. Oh, you're just putting hummus on them? Yeah, I may have forgotten <laughs> mustard, but that doesn't mean we need to go uncivilized with dry bread. Yeah, no, well, that's fair. I can't say I've ever had a sandwich with... What kind of hummus is it? Roasted garlic. Ooh. We're eating good. Is that ever a question of whether you'll eat good if I'm making your food for you? Wow, I wrote myself into a corner with that one. Mm-hmm. Well, got a little muck on the tires. 
one thing we did notice we were coming back from edmonton recently and our mud flap on the front passenger side was rubbing against the tire by the time we got home because we were gonna a piece of it had uh, come loose we were gonna try to salvage it but it was pretty well swiss cheese so i ended up actually having to cut a good portion of it off so the little bit that's left is caked in mud and when we were going through the muck and the puddles uh, as a result, Rita's step has quite a bit more muck on it, and she was getting a lot more of the uh, water splash back when we were going through puddles. So I'll have to look into getting a new mud flap for that side. But over on this side, still got a fully intact mud flap, so not as much muck. And my side's pretty clean. Oh, well, thanks for making us lunch, Bib. Of course. Look at all those veggies, making sure I eat healthy. There's more if you don't like them, and then there's even more. <laughs> there you go. Just over your shoulder, there used to be a pit. It's now full of water. They used to have it fenced off. You can see the fence posts. Uh -huh. So that might generate bugs. But with where we are right on the edge here, the wind should take care of some of the bugs, provided yeah. the wind picks up, of course. Well, and I mean, assuming nobody comes and chases us out of here, I mean, it is a weekend, long weekend at that. Um, this is a pretty big area. We've got options. Mm -hmm. What you looking at, babe? What you find? White quartz. I mean, quartz is the most common thing you'll find, but it's a nice specimen. Oh. Yeah, your mom would love that. Hmm pretty thing. I'll clean it up and put it on the shelf. Cool. All right. Let's, uh, I guess you're eating the last sandwich, eh? Mm -hmm. Cool. Awesome. All right. Well, let's get in the truck, get back on the road. So we've come up on another oil and gas area, very overgrown, probably an old site that has long since been capped. And uh, someone's built a whole little shed or cabin back here. What do you think, babe, hunting cabin? Likely, you can see that there's a chimney up top and you can also tell that it was uh, built on a uh, trailer and then dragged in and put up on some logs. I can't tell from here how long it may have been here, but it looks like somebody might be using it for the weekend because there's some party lights strung up between it and the other buildings. That is cool though, respect. I just wanna see how they, like one's on, built on a trailer and dragged in here. I just wanna see what the other two are like, whether they're on pallets or plunked down there, or I just wanna see what they kind of put together really quick and then walk back out. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, as long as we're, pretty sure there's nobody here there's no vehicles here so yeah don't want this to be one of those this is how we die moments well uh they have meat poles so they know what they're doing yeah definitely a hunting cabin then this is a really nice setup respect this be a nice little home away from home living quarters over there yeah like you said it's it's on a big trailer hitch and uh this one's locked up so they probably have some vehicles or equipment in there yeah you could probably hang a carcass in there too if you're not already having it up on the meat pole but if you needed to put it in there this looks like it's brand new too yeah look at the metal on the lock there's no mud or rust on it yeah and look at the pallets underneath they're not rotten yeah and that's an outhouse <laughs> oh and the outhouse isn't even locked yeah. My outhouse is your outhouse. Well, you don't really want to lock the have the outhouse lockable from the outside because what if your buddy's had enough of you and locks you in there overnight? <laughs> right. Be one way to go. And then I got uh, steps going up to the entrance, which is padlocked. Got a nice little floodlight up there. And yeah, I know, probably got a wood stove built in there and everything with the chimney. Yeah, and here's their wood pile. Really cool. 
Yeah, respect. This is beautiful. Like like hunting aside, this would be a great place to just come out and just get away from it all for the weekend. You know, just come out. Uh, I mean, winter may be a little dicey with the roads, but uh, yeah, just come out here. Just enjoy being out here away from everything. Peace and quiet. Get the wood stove going. Hang out with a couple of buddies or just hang out by yourself. Really beautiful place. Did you just use this strange outhouse in the middle of nowhere? Sure did. Did they at least have paper? They did. They had paper, they had wet wipes, and uh, they even had an extension cord running in for power, so probably for lights. And and they also had a fan drilled into the top of the door frame, so just to get the fumes out. Well, definitely not a camping spot right near a swamp, but uh, Rita noticed this out of the corner of her eye. It's a big old tire. What are you doing, babe? Well, there you go. I live here now. Bye-bye. <laughs> You know, seeing this uh, big tire left out here the way it is on its side, it kind of reminds me of home. Like I grew up in Fort McMurray, Alberta, a big oil sands town. And our playground that we had when we were kids had tires like this just left on their sides. And they would like put sand in them. So they were basically like sandboxes and they like just old, you know, old recycled tires and just had them out for, for the kids to play in. So it reminds me of home a little bit. Not gonna lie, if we ever get a piece of uh, rural property, I wouldn't mind getting a big tire and just putting it down for the novelty of it. Yeah. Not for a sand pit, but like just, I don't know, as a seat or a swing. That would be a cool thing to look at. Well, if we ever did do something like that, hopefully not as many ants. This is uh, definitely a supreme place to make an ant colony base. Yeah, this, uh, this one is quite shredded. It was... Uh punctured and ripped and then left out here to retire. Get it? Huh. <laughs> huh. I never get tired of exploring. <laughs> You can tell that whoever made this road put down a whole bunch of pallets to flatten this area out. Maybe they put a building on here or stored something or just used it as a turnaround. But there's a little clean moving creek just through the tall grass just beyond it. Let's go have a look. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Good excuse to get out and stretch our legs a little bit too. I love doing these um, explore days, but it's a lot of butt time in the truck. Very. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, this uh, very much looks like it could have been the foundation of a, of a structure. Or at the very least, just laid down so that workers could park here without getting stuck. Nothing big has grown through it. There's some rose bushes, because this is Alberta. But... Even the biggest ones of these little uh, shrubbery, I wouldn't say have been here for more than two years. Hmm. There's bigger ones at the edges. So something was probably already di in disuse when those started growing. Mm -hmm. And then they cleared everything else out and this got covered in silt and mud over a couple summers. Yeah. And then you get to come down to just this little creek bed. And one of these bridges over top of it, you can see, was just made with old railroad ties. And then they threw this steel structure on top. You see these everywhere in Alberta. But it's nice to actually stop and see what they cross over sometimes. Especially when it's such a pristine sounding creek.
You know how you can tell if a moose has been through? Yeah. All the tops of these branches bite, 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 bite. <laughs> and a little bit farther down where the rocks are, something big and heavy slipped trying to get into the water for a drink. <laughs> yeah, where there's uh, streams and where there's uh, swamps, especially the swamps I find, yeah, that's good territory for moose. Willow scrub. Yeah. Bugs are getting kind of atrocious. Let's get back to get back to base. All right, back down the road we go. Let's head back to the place that we're gonna call home for the night.